What will you do the next time you hear there's been a major terrorist attack? Chances are you'll turn on a TV. A possible terror attack. And specifically cable news. And apparently there's been an explosion. If it's a big attack, you'll watch hours of coverage over the next few days. It's emerging now as a mass casualty situation. Try to find out exactly what's going on. It's a very disturbing situation. You'll learn excruciating details about the attack. We don't know the extent of the injuries. I haven't seen anything like it in my life. See images of it replayed dozens of times. Watch sensationalized segments about how it happened, what our response should be. We need to close our borders. And when the next attack might come. This kind of tragedy will not be the last one of its kind. Watching this will make you feel scared, stressed, and anxious. Could the U.S. be next? But you'll keep watching anyway. Most people find terrorism coverage almost impossible to turn off. We watch news like this because we want to be informed about potential threats to our safety. Could what happened in Paris happen in the U.S. But what if it does the opposite? What if watching terrorism coverage makes us worse at knowing how to keep ourselves safe? One basic problem with how we understand scary news is that our brains care a lot more about stories than they do about statistics. We're not very good at math, so we often judge the severity of a risk by how often we encounter it. That's Bruce Schneier. He's a security expert who's written a lot about why our brains overreact to scary news stories. And those stories stick to us more than the data does, so we make risk decisions more based on the stories than a reality. So if we see a bunch of stories about shark attacks, we think shark attacks are common. If we see a story about a plane crash, we will overestimate the risks of flying. We don't do this because we're dumb. It's a basic psychology problem. News, by definition, is something that almost never happens. But that's not the way our brains work. If it's in the news, if it's talked about, if we hear about it a lot, we confuse that with it being common. And you can see this problem most clearly when it comes to terrorism. The chances of you or someone you know dying from terrorism are virtually zero. Terrorism looks scary, but it kills a shockingly low number of Americans. You are way less likely to die from terrorism than you are from choking on food while watching TV. That being said, after 9-11, Americans consumed a ton of extreme, shocking news coverage about terrorism. And our fear that we would be killed by terrorists spiked. Now you'd think as time went on and we went years without another 9-11, that our fears of terrorism would go down, the same way they went down after the Oklahoma City bombing, for example. But they didn't. We stayed scared. And you only need to turn on cable news to understand why. Terror in the streets of Paris. We have not ruled out terrorism. Digital. Terrorism, homegrown terrorists. TV news is packed with round the clock coverage of the war on terror, footage of ISIS training exercises, a violent new ISIS video, and endless debates about potential threats posed by refugees and sleeper cells and homegrown radicals. So called lone wolf threats. Lone wolf, lone wolf. When there is a terrorist attack, near or far, Cable news turns into 24-hour terror networks. The fear of terror attacks has many people wondering if their country, even their city, is next. News networks get big ratings boosts during terror attacks, so they have no incentive to tone down their coverage. This is the economics of news. The way you get that readership and viewership is by being spectacular, going with the stories that are scary, that are threatening, that are terrifying. Every year, MSNBC re-airs footage of the 9-11 attacks, so we never forget. It's hard to watch this stuff and not feel like terrorism is a constant looming threat. The reign of terror shows no signs of abating. Which helps explain why terrorism made up two of Americans' top 10 fears in 2016. Our heightened fear isn't due to a change in risk, it's due to a change in our perception of that risk. How quickly we can hear the word terrorism and imagine a scary story about it in our heads. And that heightened fear causes us to overreact. A study conducted after 9-11 found that for people who thought another terror attack was imminent, watching TV news made them more likely to support hawkish responses to terrorism, including things like military action. Shock and awe. It also causes us to pursue security measures that sound good, but don't actually make us safer. And Schneier invented a term for it. He calls it security theater. Security theater is a security measure that looks good, but doesn't do anything. Schneier sees examples of security theater in things like the border wall and the Muslim 
Muslim ban, the things that Trump has made centerpieces of his national security strategy. We've been talking about this right from the beginning. All the efforts to keep the foreigners out of the U.S. are a prime example of security theater. They're not going to make us safer, but they're big, they're public, and there's a segment of the United States that is scared and sees those things and feels safer. It's not just that these strategies don't work, it's that they're the opposite of the types of strategies that actually do make us safer. If we actually want to be safer, often the best things to do are the things that don't make a splash. It's going to be espionage, intelligence, and emergency response, hiring foreign translators. This is boring stuff. The problem is the same sensationalist coverage that makes us overestimate the risk of terror makes it really hard for politicians to say no to security theater. Do you think President Obama fully understands the extent of the threat? When CNN is a 24-hour horror story, there's a lot of pressure on the president to overreact. Are we doing enough? To, to stop these kinds of attacks. And this helps explain why Trump's security theater is so popular with his supporters. He echoes the fear and panic they see on cable news. It's gonna get worse and worse. You're gonna have more World Trade Centers. When you're scared, you're gonna be drawn to the politician that does things that are big, that are public, that are spectacular. Invade a country, build a wall. Now, when I started writing this episode, I was sure that Schneier's answer was gonna be to stop watching, but I was wrong. Of course, we all have to watch the news. We can't turn away. I couldn't force someone to do that. I can have trouble doing that myself. Well, what then? In some ways, our best defense is understanding what's going on. We can't stop our brains from reacting the way they do. All we can do is observe it, recognize that we have these biases, and try to correct for them. If I have one takeaway, it's to understand that your brain isn't processing risk properly. And the more you can do that, the safer you'll be. I know it's not a satisfying answer. We will almost certainly see another major scary terrorist attack in our lifetime. The one that dominates the news cycle and fills our brain with extreme and violent images. We're gonna hear pundits and politicians calling for dramatic response, and we're gonna feel very, very scared. I even noticed myself freaking out while researching clips for this episode. We are humans, not machines. We can't just look at charts and data and fix the part of our brains that misjudges risk. What we can do is remember to be skeptical of our fears, our politicians, and of the people on TV for whom our terror is good business. Cable News' obsession with scary terrorism coverage can backfire pretty hilariously, like in this CNN segment from 2015. An unnerving sight today at a London gay pride celebration, an ISIS flag. Only problem, that is not an ISIS flag. That is a bunch of dildos. <laughs> <It's like a laughs>